Okay people, so we have a steering lock problem here on a Nissan Cube and basically um, what I did was my girlfriend had her vehicle, they were asking her for $800 for this stupid part and a fix um, and I figured out the workaround so I'm sharing it with you guys so that you can get your car fixed. In the case of her car, the steering lock was completely foobar um, so I decided I would take it apart and take a look to see what was inside to try and fix it and I've figured out the workaround. So what you're going to find is this is the steering lock and it's actually mounted underneath the column here um, and what I've done is there are four rivet locations on each side and basically what I've done is I've drilled out the rivets and when you're driving, drilling out the rivets, make really sure not to go too deep because if you go too deep and you puncture through, you're going to damage the circuit board that's in there. Um, and you don't want that. So go very slowly when you're actually trying to pull out those rivets. Once you get to the rivet and it pops loose, you'll notice that the housing will actually be movable in the, the location of the rivet. So you have went deep enough at that point. Um, once you've got all four rivets, this guy comes apart and basically you're gonna have this top piece and you're gonna have this lower piece where this circuit board is actually mounted inside of um, and basically what you're gonna do is there's two uh, torque screws in there uh, just undo the two torque screws uh, pull out the circuit board and what you're gonna find is that there's a plunger and if you look here what happens is the plunger right here this is the actual steering lock and there's a plunger right here and it actually hits these switches and there's two of them and over time these switches start screwing up and everything gets all botched up so what I've decided to do was get the car started with some switches and jumper wire and basically can repeat the process so as you see I pulled out the switches um, what I've done to pull out the switcher, uh, switches is I just uh, went to the board, went to the back of the board, and basically you've got three locations here. You can't, it's not focusing, but there's three locations. Excuse the bad soldering, I was in pissy mood. But um, the three locations, and basically what they end up doing is I bridged the three locations with one piece of solder while I had my girlfriend pull out the switch and that seemed to do the trick um, for pulling out the switch. To get the car started obviously um, you need to push down on the switches both at the same time. Hit the brake, um, push down on the switches then hit your start. Uh, we do it with the fob pressed up against the start. Uh, didn't have much luck without the fob pushed up against the start button. I haven't tested it enough to try with and without yet, but we're just pressing it against the start button. It's So you get accessory power and it comes on all by itself. Um, but what I've done, as you can see, is there's two normally off and normally on um, positions on the switches. And the two outer positions, that actually is a jumper when the vehicle is actually locked, those will come on. So it's actually, you'd be bridging the top and bottom uh, connections with the uh, with the lock up with the lock down you're bridging these two locations so what you want to do is jumper out this switch and jumper out the other switch and then pull the switches out so you actually have to get the car started jumper it then pull the switches out and you're good to go forever no more effing with the uh, with the lock or anything else this is going to be a permanent fix um, basically also one other thing to note why do I have the motor connected here for some reason this circuit board needs the motor to get the car started it would not start without the motor on it so uh, plug the motor back in what I plan on doing is remounting this back in the housing just as it is and it should be good to go um, the actual sequence once you're messing with it is press on the brake, push the buttons, use the fob to push the start button, and it'll start the vehicle. 
Um, then once the buttons are actually pressed, while they are remain pressed, put the jumper wires on. So have somebody just keep those buttons down, jumper these out, and your vehicle should crawl, knock on wood, start. <laughs> see if uh, we can get this thing to start like this and see. Boom. Just like that. And there it is, people. That's the hack. You can see the old location where the buttons were, or those pads right there. They're permanently out. And that's Fix. Hope it helps other people. This Nissan shit is bullshit. Have a good day. Bye-bye.